SpaceX has completed a static fire test with its next reused booster, launching an ambitious schedule and opening a new chapter for pad operations. Meanwhile, in Florida, the Starship program pushes ahead despite major challenges, while Falcon 9 and Starlink continue reaching new milestones that showcase steady progress on multiple fronts. Let's explore these updates on today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX is truly ramping up momentum following the remarkable success of Flight 10, and all signs now point toward an accelerated push for Flight 11. As noted in the previous episode, B-15 was moved to the launch pad just 11 days after Flight 10, a clear demonstration of how quickly SpaceX is working and how prepared the team is across multiple aspects of the program. This rapid turnaround is already setting new records and raising expectations. After B-15's arrival at the launch pad, it was immediately lifted onto the orbital launch mount on the morning of September 6th, where it stood ready for testing during the announced window between 5 in the morning to 12 noon on September 7th. Preparations began promptly on the 6th, with the booster transport stand leaving the launch pad and heading back to the Hoppy parking lot, which is a routine part of setup. Later that evening, activity picked up once more. A short test window revealed strong venting that indicated the detonation suppression system was being checked. Soon after, the chopsticks were raised, and the ship quick disconnect arm was retracted, further signaling that the booster was entering its final preparations. By the early morning of the 7th, the unmistakable signs of a fueling operation began. Frost bands appeared on the tank walls, showing that liquid oxygen was being fully loaded into the liquid oxygen tank, while the methane tank was filled to about one-third capacity. These steps were clear indications that the team was closing in on the static fire test. When the moment arrived, Starbase came alive. More than 350,000 gallons of water rushed across the flame trench to suppress sound and heat, and then all 33 Raptor engines roared to life. The ground shook, nearby cameras caught vibrations and small debris, and SpaceX confirmed success by sharing stunning footage accompanied by the announcement, static fire complete for the Super Heavy Booster preparing for Starship's 11th flight test. According to the footage and data, all 33 engines fired simultaneously, generating over 7,000 tons of thrust. The burn lasted for eight full seconds, long enough to validate both the booster and the pad systems. Importantly, the test concluded without any reported issues, which was further confirmed by the smooth sequence of post-test operations. The chopsticks lowered back into place, the ship QD arm reattached, and the booster's support equipment, including the transport stand and Raptor work platform, were returned to the pad for inspection. Soon after, Cameron County and announced a closure schedule for the booster's transport back to the production site, set between 10 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon on the 8th. This marks another major step forward for Flight 11. Once back inside the Mega Bay, B-15 will undergo inspections before hot staging hardware and the flight termination system are installed. These inspections are particularly important because B-15 is a reused booster, having previously flown on Flight 8. Engineers will pay close attention to problem areas from its earlier flights, such as the middle ring engines that experienced failures during boost back and landing burns. Flight 11 will thus become the second Starship mission to fly with a reused booster, another crucial milestone in proving the viability of rapid turnaround and reusability within the Starship program. If successful, this will build confidence for the even greater challenge ahead, which is recovering and reusing the Starship upper stage itself. Speaking of the ship, S-38 is also approaching readiness. At this point, its engines are expected to be installed, but before rollout, SpaceX must finish inspections on the launch pad and reinstall install the ship test system. Following recent patterns, S-38 will likely go through at least two major static fire tests, one with a single engine and another with the full cluster, to validate performance before flight. After the S-37 campaign, much of the testing hardware was moved to the Sanchez site, but preparations suggest that everything is nearly ready to return. If the current pace continues, S-38 could be moved and tested within a week, with another week or more reserved for final payload integration and installation of the FTS system. This timeline keeps the possibility of a September launch alive, particularly after the smooth B-15 static fire. So will Flight 11 take off this month? That remains the big question. The pace suggests it's possible, and personally, my prediction is the 29th of this month. What do you think? Respond with yes or no in the comments along 
with your prediction for the launch date. The vision that emerges after the successful B-15 static fire test goes beyond a single booster or even a single flight. It marks the beginning of a new era for SpaceX's launch pads, an evolution that will define the next stage of Starship's development. B-15 is very likely the last V-1 booster to take to the skies. Starting with the next flight, both ship and Super Heavy are expected to transition to the new V-3 design. This change also means that Pad 1, with its current OLM, chopsticks and water-cooled steel plates, will no longer be suitable for the demands of future missions. These systems were remarkable for their time, but they were always intended as stepping stones rather than permanent solutions. As a result, Flight 11 may well be the final booster test conducted at Pad 1 before SpaceX shifts booster testing and launch operations to the newly built Pad 2. That site is now in the final stages of installation and is expected to be tested for operations within the last months of this year. Looking back, it's clear that Pad 1 deserves recognition for its role in shaping the early days of Starship. From full-stack integration tests to 10 historic flights with one more still to come, Pad 1 has endured countless challenges and proven its strength. While it may not be capable of sustaining long-term operations in its current form, it'll forever stand as a symbol of Starship's earliest breakthroughs and the foundation of its journey. The end of Pad 1's current role does not mean the end of Pad 1 itself. Once Flight 11 is complete, the pad will undergo extensive upgrades. The six-legged orbital launch mount and the steel plate will be replaced with a new OLM and a flame trench system similar to what Pad 2 is receiving. Other systems, including the chopsticks, SQD, and BQD will also be modernized. If SpaceX continues its current pace, Pad 1 could return to service by late next year, just in time to support a wave of critical missions. This is part of a much larger expansion effort. Beyond Pad 1, SpaceX is preparing upgrades at Kennedy Space Center's LC-39A, beginning work on a new pad at Cape Canaveral's SLC-37, and even planning additional pads at Starbase as the site grows. Each new development strengthens SpaceX's capacity to support frequent launches, paving the way for the scale of operations needed for deep space exploration. Pad 1 may soon step aside, but it'll also lead the way into this new chapter. So let us honor its contribution by looking forward to its future. If you support the upgrades, respond in the comments with Evolve Every Day, and do not forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's extraordinary development journey. SpaceX's plan to expand Starship operations to Florida represents one of the most ambitious steps in the program's journey, but it's far from a straightforward process. The path is shaped not only by engineering challenges, but also by regulatory, environmental, and community considerations. The FAA plays a central role in this effort. As part of the approval process, the FAA has released multiple Draft Environmental Impact Statements, or EIS, which assess the potential consequences of Starship operations in Florida. These drafts are followed by periods of public comment and formal hearings before the final EIS can be issued and official approval granted. Recently, the FAA concluded a series of public hearings focused on Starship's presence at Kennedy Space Center, including proposed launch and landing activities as well as ocean-based recoveries using drone ships stationed in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. However, the hearings highlighted several concerns that cannot be ignored. Due to Starship's massive scale compared to Falcon 9, safety zones for both air and sea traffic will need to expand significantly. This translates to larger exclusion zones around the launch site and more frequent closures. According to the analysis, Playa Linda Beach, a popular recreational site, could face more than 60 closures each year. Additionally, commercial air traffic across Florida may experience delays ranging from 40 minutes to 2 hours during launch windows. Maritime operations, particularly at Port Canaveral, will also be affected due to temporary navigation restrictions. Local voices have added to the debate. Aviation officials, including Tampa International Airport's COO John Tiliakos, emphasized the risks to Florida's busy air travel system. Tiliakos warned that Starship's schedule could result in significant impact to commercial aviation and the traveling public, urging the FAA to find mitigation strategies. Others raised health and quality of life issues. Robin Memphis, a neuroscience and psychology graduate student, 
Hyman pointed out that launch noise and sonic booms could trigger chronic sleep disruption. She linked this to risks of depression, anxiety, cardiovascular disease, and even suicide, noting that Florida's large population of veterans and trauma survivors make the issue particularly concerning. Even less expected groups voiced opposition, such as the American Association for Nude Recreation, which argued that frequent closures of certain areas would interfere with their members' rights and the tourism tied to legal nudist locations. Yet support for Starship in Florida remains strong. Many see it as a vital leaf for humanity's future in space. Photographers and enthusiasts like Max West expressed their excitement, acknowledging that while there may be little sacrifices along the way, such as disruptions to wildlife or recreation, the greater progress outweighs the drawbacks. Large institutions, including NASA and government bodies, are firmly behind the project, given Starship's role in lunar missions, Mars ambitions, and expanding America's spaceflight capabilities. Ultimately, Florida stands at a crossroads. The state could soon host the most powerful rocket system in history, but the decision comes with trade-offs that affect daily life, tourism, and the environment. Whether the community embraces or resists these changes will help shape Starship's future beyond Texas. What about you? Do you support Starship coming to Florida? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. As that question lingers, one thing remains clear. SpaceX is already reshaping modern rocketry. On September 5th, a Falcon 9 launched from Florida's LC-39A, carrying another batch of Starlink satellites. While routine for SpaceX, the mission's recovery marked history. Booster B-1069 lasted on Just Read the Instructions, achieving its 27th landing and bringing SpaceX to its 500th orbital class launch and landing. Musk celebrated the feat, writing, Congrats, SpaceX team, on 500 orbital rocket launches and landings. This milestone underscores the company's unmatched mastery of reusability. The very next day, another Falcon 9 lifted off from California with more Starlink satellites, pushing 2025's total satellites launched past 2,000 and raising the overall constellation above 9,600. Of these, over 8,300 remain active, forming the largest satellite network ever built. Competitors like Amazon's Project Kuiper are just beginning, but the gap is vast. SpaceX is already on pace to surpass 12,000 satellites as soon as next year. Each launch is more than a mission. It's proof of reliability, cost efficiency, and relentless momentum. With records falling at an unprecedented pace, the only question left is how quickly SpaceX will reach the next milestone. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.